This video is sponsored by PCB Way. Hey there, this is Seth Schaefer from Team Just Cause Robotics, and in today's video, we're going to talk about Mini Mulcher, my one pound ant weight robot that competed back in the end of April at Maker Battles in Hartford, Connecticut. Now, I built this robot quite a long time ago. I'd actually been working on it for like over a year almost during COVID pandemic times because it was just kind of a fun project for me to work on tweaking this thing. And uh, it has a few design elements that you might actually find familiar from SSP here, even though SSP would design much, much later. So I'll talk about that in a little bit. But Mini Mulcher is basically a keep it simple, stupid robot personified. I mean, this is pretty much the absolute minimum that you can do to have two wheels and a weapon in a one pound robot and all of the weight possible really is dedicated just to the weapon often to its detriment i'll talk about why this is good and bad moving forward so unlike my last video i want to give a bit of a deep dive into what mini mulcher looks like because i haven't made any videos on mini mulcher recently and i think it's a little bit interesting to look inside of so there's kind of like three parts to this assembly. You've got the shaft, which just threads into a nut on the bottom of the chassis. You've got the weapon stack with its gear and hub and bearings. And then you've got the bot itself. So for the bot itself, we just pull off this lid, which is 3D printed nylon. And then you've got the chassis, which is 3D printed nylon and this little TPU thing on the front. Um, this is pretty much the minimum parts that you can use inside of an Antweight robot. The only thing that every robot doesn't need that this one has is this thing right here which is a voltage regulator to run the drive motors at a lower voltage than the battery but the receiver and drive run off of that voltage regulator the battery powers the weapon speed controller and weapon motor directly and there's a power switch for a finger tech switch on the side here it's really dead simple really not much to it now Mini Mulcher has a very weird weight distribution. Uh, it's about half weapon and half robot, <laughs> which is not advisable in any way. And especially with an overhead weapon like this and only two wheel drive, it makes it extremely hard to control this bot. I basically can't spin the weapon past like 30% speed without it just spinning underneath the weapon uncontrollably because it doesn't have enough traction to withstand the force of the weapon spinning up. Uh, but it is kind of a fun, stupid little project here. Mini Mulcher is a pretty silly ant weight robot. I mean, this is just the size of the chassis. So the body of the robot with the battery in it, without some screws, is 228.4 grams, or about eight ounces. So it is half of the weight of the robot. And then the other half is basically the weapon assembly. So here is the lighter of my weapons, and it is 6.2 ounces with the gear and screws and bearings. Here is the heavier one, and it is 6.7 ounces. And by comparison, my beetle weight, which should be three times the size, three times the weight division, which has an oversized weapon for a beetle, is only 9.75 ounces. So 9.75 ounces for a three pound bot weapon versus 6.7 ounces for a one pound bot weapon. That's a pretty serious weapon. So one thing you might have noticed is I've got this TPU thing and on the bottom there's actually dovetails, kind of like what you see on SSP. In fact, I prototyped this long before I ever designed SSP. So you could have modular front attachments that just kind of slot onto it. Even forks, though these are 3D printed forks so they're pretty terrible as forks go. Um, and then the lid just kind of clamshells down on top and helps to hold those attachments and the drive motors and stuff in place like so pretty much all 3d printed other than the uh, electronics and the weapons so you can see in my ssp kits uh, i have a similar dovetail situation except that the chassis has kind of the female and the forks have kind of the male dovetail slots 
so that I can swap out different fork configurations. And even with a pair of them, you can slap on an entire wedge configuration like so. And then once you put the lid on, it kind of clamps everything in place and it can't come loose. So I have pulled Mini Mulcher more or less out of a uh, mini retirement to get to this competition because I've touched it not at all since it competed last at the sword competition, placing third overall. But it had a bunch of crippling design flaws then and it has the same crippling design flaws now, namely that it has trouble self-writing and it's really unstable when spinning the weapon too fast, as I alluded to before. So my first fight was going to be up against an Antweight Viper Vertical Spinner. This is the exact same robot that I ended up losing to at Sword, so uh, my hopes were not very high for this, but it was this competitor's first ever competition. That said, the guy who won Sword also was his first ever competition, so hey, you never know with these things. Antweight Vipers are not that bad. Um, so let's see how this fight went. Three! Great way to start the event. Uh, as is in BattleBots fashion, the only solution to this problem is improvise, adapt, and overcome. I had brought along a couple SSP kits and shrapnel mine just for demos. I didn't bring along Division just because it couldn't fit in my big toolbox. And I realized that the motors that I use on shrapnel mine might just barely fit. Super sad. There's no way that won't just happen every time if people are not nice to me. So I am going to try and take the drive motor off of shrapnel mine in place of the weapon motor on mini mulcher and see if that'll work. Because this is a 1700 kV, it should deliver quite a bit more total power and total torque. It's a little bigger. It's 2306 instead of a 2205, 2206. But yeah, 2205 on here. I think I'll be able to make it work. All right, Paul, who is running Mini Stinger, the other copy of Mini Mulcher, thankfully had some nylock nuts that I can use. Oh, of course, I put it in upside down. Because um, the problem is the ones on the drive system on shrapnel mine are all right-hand threaded motors. But the one I had on Mini Mulcher was a left-hand threaded uh, nut so that it would tighten into the hits. But now I'm switching to a drive... Uh, B controller too, so it's gonna be able to reverse the weapon, which I don't necessarily want, but it is what it is. I can only use two of the screws, so this is a 1616 pattern, and the other motor is 16 by 19, so the screw holes don't line up. This might be just dumb enough to work. It's in there. It has just enough space to spin.
problem solved. So I just tested it and it worked technically, but because the thread is the other way, when I spun the weapon in the normal direction, it like unscrewed itself. So I have to fiddle around with the radio settings so that it only tightens, I think. Okay, so I have the robot back together with Shopify's drive motor. I cut a bigger hole in the lid so it's not pinching the motor. It seems to work fine. Um, I switched over to using the Radio Master Zorro transmitter and then reprogrammed it so that I only have it spin one direction because the Strap the Mind drive speed controller was programmed to spin both directions. And I have a switch I can flip to spin the other way if I have to, but if I do that it like unscrews this nut which throws the weapon gear off. So I'm going to not do that in a fight and I should be good. It spins up with a ton more torque now. It's so, so, so much better though. So I'm hoping I don't get stuck as easily, but we'll see. Now that Mini Malter was working again, it was time to prepare for my next fight, which was going to be up against another Antweight Vertical Spinner Kit, this time a Taser Face Kit. This kit is even more expensive than my Beetleway SSP kit for some reason, so let's see how this fight went. Two, one, fight! Robots, fight! Alright, so we have Mini Malter here against Warrior Owl. Warrior Owl, uh, is from the local first robot Out of the space here at Harper, and that is a tap out. Unfortunately, it does not seem to get right under the corner. Let me take a hammer and smash this thing because it is. Yeah, what the heck? Is this the drive working? Like, nope. I know. It looks like uh, every time you try to move the drive, it's losing power. Is yeah, your battery like charged? That, that could be a battery issue. I think your battery might be dead. And when oh. you're trying to pull current, it's just like flatting. It's so barely even move. That's the problem. Yeah. Uh, I didn't check back in with them afterwards, but I'm willing to bet that the issue was that they put a dead battery into the robot, or they just forgot to recharge between fights, or maybe they swapped the battery to one that hadn't been charged in the first place. Who knows? Um, Shit happens, but not the way I wanted to win, but a win is a win. Next fight that I had, however, was going to be much more exciting, this time against Tony Ambrosio's little one-pound antweight bot, Dreamy, that is driven by his really cute daughter. Tony's bot looks immaculate. It's definitely the best bot looking here, and I knew this was going to be a really tough fight because yet another vertical spinner and also a beater bar, which Mini Mulcher doesn't really have an answer for. So, I was pretty worried going into this fight. Now, before we get into that, I'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for PCB assembly, CNC machining, 3D printing, industrial parts, or even injection molding. You can check out all of the awesome capabilities that they have at PCBWay.com. They have 3, 4, and 5-axis machining and turning, industrial 3D printing, even including 3D printing in metals tool steel, titanium, stainless steel, and aluminum. It's not cheap, but if you need it, it's there for you. I have used their CNC machining service a couple of times, and every time I've gotten fantastic quality parts in timely manner, about two or three weeks from order, depending on the size of your order and the complexity of the parts. And they also offer a bunch of finishing options, which is really cool. So you can get your parts anodized, bead blasted and anodized if they're aluminum. You can get painting, powder coating, spray painting, you name it, they have it. Definitely check out PCB Way, the link in the description for $5 off your first order. Three, two, one, fight. All right, here we go. Big anticipated match. Aria here. Nine years old from Massachusetts. First time competing, but she is a really good uh, driver. Driven for her dad behind her, Anthony, who is part of Team Omega on the big BattleBot stage and Team Shred It in our Norwalk Havoc division. Seth here, Team WPI. Just Cause Robotics. You can check him out on YouTube. Seth has fully, yes, big hit from Aria there. Got Seth upside down. Oh, oh, see if Seth can self right here. Yes, all right. You love to see it. Both weapons still up to speed. See if Aria can get squared up again. Stay facing. Aria is doing her best to stay squared up to Seth so that she can go weapon to weapon versus getting... 
hits out of those beautiful, beautiful. We have one minute left. Something is wrong with our clock, but don't worry. Our rep has it under control. We're going, there we go. Oh, Seth upside down again. Let's see if she can crab walk. Those beautiful wheel guards with that little feeder bar. Delivering some hits and popping mini mulcher up there. There we go. Trying to get there. Oh, Seth on his side. Let's see if Seth can get that self rider going and get turned back upside down. 30 seconds to go. Both robots still up. Love to see this. There we go. See if we can get go weapon to weapon and see what happens. There's still a lot of power in these little little machines. Seems like Dreamy is getting the better out of the hits here. Dreamy, Dreamy, me. Four, three, two, one, and that is the match. We are going to the judges. Big hand of applause for Aria and Seth. So, despite the massive disadvantage that Mini Mulcher was at with this weapon type. Uh, because Dreamy loaded in with only one drive side working for whatever reason, I was able to eke out a judge's decision win just barely, so Mini Mulcher moved on in the tournament. Uh, I didn't take any real damage during this fight, every time I got hit I just flipped upside down because Mini Mulcher is super unstable and I couldn't keep my weapon at a fast enough speed to actually do any real damage to them. Plus Mini Mulcher's drive speed is so slow, like I don't really get that much bite anyway, so I couldn't do anything to their TPU wheel guards to actually damage a wheel. Anytime I went weapon to weapon with them, I'd just get popped in the air. Like, I really couldn't do any actual damage in this fight. Uh, I really need to redesign Mini Mulcher to be a more competitive bot, but for what it was, uh, at least it's pretty durable, so it held up, and the new motor definitely made the difference in being able to self-ride consistently after all of those flips. My next fight was going to be up against Lumikid with his bot Luma's Plow, which is a candy wasp kit. Yeah, shockingly, most robots at small local one pound tournaments are kits. I don't know why, but they are. I mean, Viper kits are pretty good and they're really common and they're not that expensive, so I guess it makes sense. But we got the whole gamut of kits at this event. Let's see how this fight was going to go. We're fighting a wedge with a big overhead horizontal is definitely not a great type advantage either. But I was hoping I could get around to a drive side and take out one of those juicy exposed wheels. So you never know what'll happen. Four, three, two, one. Fight, robots, fight. All right. Luma's plow straight out of the corner with a box rush. And now it looks like, oh no. All right, Seth, nice enough to give him a little bit of a hit to get out stuff from under the corner. Get up to speed again. See if he can move in and deliver some hits on that wedge. A little bit of gyro here. Out of control with that weapon getting back up to speed. Luma's Plow going to see what he can do to try to stop that weapon. Gain those control points. Wedge bots can be, can be effective. We love to see a good wedge bot. Right. Mini Mulcher back up to speed trying to corner Luma's plow, deliver some hits. It looks like some chunks out of the wheels. All right. All right, we have one minute left in this match. Mini Mulder still completely spinning. You can see some of those hits delivering a little bit of sparks on that wedge of the front of Luma's plow. Can the weapon spin back up on Mini Mulcher? Oh boy. It does not look like that weapon is going to come back alive, unfortunately. So we might come down to control in the last 22 seconds of the match. See if he can control the plow and get it into the corner. Really get those aggressive points. Right, in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That is the match, and we are going to the judges.
Well, after a lot of back and forth, unfortunately, Mini Mulcher did not win that judge decision, so Mini Mulcher was eliminated from the tournament. Um, it was still a pretty fun event. It was nice to be able to just kind of show up. It was only like an hour and 40 minutes from where I live. I just drove down there the same day, drove back, and uh, it was like one day quick event done by like 4 p.m. I was able to head home and get back home before like 7 p.m., which is pretty convenient and very far cry from my experiences at Norwalk, where now basically anytime I go there is a one or two night hotel stay, or at the May event rather, we drove back and I got back at like 1 a.m. because the event was ending so late and we didn't even stay towards the end of the event. I'm sure the event itself ended close to midnight. Hey, that is what it is with small local competitions. It's pretty nice to be able to just show up. It's pretty chill and relaxed compared to something like Norwalk, which is just absolutely crazy, packed with hundreds of people and some of the most competitive people in the entire world entire world there um yeah definitely a different experience and i would recommend it i'm planning to go to the next maker battles they haven't announced dates yet but i think they said they're gonna have another one in june or july and then a third one also this year later in the year so check out maker battles website i'll link in the description for that um, I also brought a couple SSP kits, like I said, for demos there. I let some kids from the audience drive them around. They had a lot of fun doing that. So that was pretty cool. I might try and do that at some other events if I head down to them with some SSPs along with me, maybe at a New Jersey event or another one of the Maker Battles events in the future. I guess we'll see. Let me know if there's some local event that's near somewhere vaguely near the Boston area that you'd like me to attend. If you have anything in mind, definitely let me know. And as always, if you like this video, click like. If you agreed with that judge's decision or you disagree with the judge's decision, let me know in the comments down below. And make sure to subscribe so you don't miss my upcoming battery testing video and my March recap with SSP that I'm still working on editing. Uh, that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for watching.